Kastuba Das here with a big announcement for Wisdom of the Sages listeners. This August will be Ashram Month at the Super Soul Farm. Simple ashram living, rising early, morning kirtan, yoga and pranayama, healthy vegan and vegetarian meals, farm seva and being immersed in nature, and then gathering in the evenings for kirtan and readings. Plus, each week we'll have a lead presenter teaching a different facet of the philosophy and lifestyle of bhakti yoga. Week number one will be the exceptional bhakti lata teaching a course called The Beauty of Bhakti, bringing the culture of love and devotion into our lives. Week number two is my brother from another mother, Raghunath, teaching Falling in Love with Divinity, the Bhakti Yogi's method for opening the heart. And week number three is myself with a course called Following the Path, examining the history and teachings of Bhakti Yoga. You can come for one, two, or all three weeks, and the pricing is by donation. For more dates and information, go to wisdomthesages.com slash events. Peace. Live from New York City, this is Wisdom of the Sages, your daily yoga podcast. Today, I'm your host, Kastuba Das. My dear friend, buddy, co-host, and all-around terrific guy, Raghunath, is, uh, he, did, he just didn't feel like getting up this morning, I think, Mary. Is that the problem? <laughs> it's hard. He's, he's out in California, so it's really early there, and, uh, and he's been pushing it lately. Yeah, they have late nights there. He was given a class at the Long Beach Temple last night, I think. He gave class at the Long Beach Temple. He did a whole day full of uh, retreat there at Yoga 108, our friends mm -hmm. at Yoga 108 in Long Beach. And he's got a big uh, Ratiatra today, right? Yeah. The LA Ratiatra today. Anyone in the LA area, it's where is it? It's uh, Venice Beach today is the LA Ratiatra. There's Ratiatras going around all over the place right now, aren't there? Yeah. Anyway, Mara, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you, Kastuba? I'm doing good. And I noticed that you're not in the kitchen today, you're just relaxing. I am. I have a day look, off. Look at how relaxed you look. You're sipping <laughs> from your mug. You're just, you're not working. That's uh, yeah. it's good to see you on a weekend. Not, not having to, it's, it's tough being the number one caterer in Columbia County <laughs> and uh, you deserve a weekend off every now and then. Thank you. Um, we have a very special guest here today to interview, but before we get there, I just want to check in Mara. Do we have any announcements to make? Uh, well, we have back to your recovery group meeting today at 9.30 a.m. And then the show will be at 8 a.m. all this week because Rago is in California. Okay, so back to recovery, it is changing lives for real. And when yeah. we say that, we're not just like saying like cliche. It is, and, and you don't even have to be like a serious addict or something like that to benefit from it. It's like, it, it's really, um, it's, it's a real life changer for people. So uh, that's today at what time? You said 9.30. 9.30, shortly yeah. after the show. And 8 a.m. All, all week next week, yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. Now, today, I am thrilled. I'm excited. I am um, I'm very happy to bring on a special guest. Um, our guest today, is he's known as the Walking Swami, uh, but his official name is Bhakti Marga Swami. Um, Bhakti Marga Swami is someone that I met when I was uh, a monk myself, right? I was a brand new, very young monk. This was back in the late 80s or early 90s and sometimes with a with a group of traveling monks I, we used to in the summertime go to Toronto where Bhakti Margaswami stayed a lot um, I knew him as a, a senior monk uh, as a very devoted person as the true gentleman and, and a true uh, a, a deep spiritual uh, seeker and, and, and deep spiritualist and as a person that was really kind of like the the center of the Bhakti Yoga community there in Toronto, Canada. Um, and he's gone on to become known as the walking Swami because he's, he's regularly taking like uh, long uh, hikes, you could say, I suppose, um, where he crosses North America and like from one end to the other. He's crossed Canada four times. He's crossed the United States once, as well as other places too. Bhakti Mark Swami, welcome to Wisdom of the Sages. It's, a, it's an honor and a, a joy to have you here this morning. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No, it's 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 uh, it, 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 as I say, it's a joy. Um, Maharaj, maybe bef before we get into, I really want to dig into this idea of your long walks and and uh, how how why you do it and, and and why why it might be important for a bhakti yoga practitioner. But before that, maybe we could just get just a brief. Um, uh, you know what? Even before I do that. I always like to throw out right at the beginning uh, where people can get the book, right? Because Maharaj had a book that's recently been released. I want to make sure people uh, know where to get that. And the title of the book, 
is the Saffron Pass um, trekking the globe with the walking monk. And uh, people can find that on Amazon.com, I suppose, right? And as well as people can visit Maharaj's website at thewalkingmonk.net. But having, I, I just want to put that out at the beginning and the end so people can't miss it. But uh, Maharaj, maybe you could just tell us how you came to practice bhakti yoga. You, you grew up in Canada, correct? That's right. I was uh, raised in southwestern Ontario. Okay. Uh, if anybody knows uh, some history, very close to the famous Uncle Tom's Cabin, Oh, if cool. anybody's familiar with that. And also, uh, that's a one day's walk from Uncle Tom's Cabin, and then two days walk to the place where the famous Chief Tecumseh was killed at the Thames River in Southern Ontario. Okay. So I was raised on a farm and I get up in the morning, my dad would call me, my name was John at that time, still mm -hmm. is on my passport legal. <laughs> and he says, time to get up, it's 5.30 in the morning, time to milk the cow. So I could go to the, to the chores in the barn and wake up and so I had that experience. So when I heard that uh, from uh, Krishna monks that, uh, God's a coward boy takes on that form. I could relate to it. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was good. And, you know, I, I grew up through the uh, 50s and the 60s and, you know, countercultural, you know, experiences. And uh, everyone in those days was influenced by that and the Beatles. And we heard about celebs like uh, Peter Sellers and Mia Farrow and the Beatles going to India. Well, what's this thing about India? Because you know, in our studies, at least in Canada, I'm sure it's the same in the US, we gloss over, you know, India, like you go through history, India, there's not much to say there. There's just a lot of people. Anything about India in school. In, oh, oh, nothing at all. But, you know, the sacred cows ideas, cows are led to run free and people are left to starve, the, you know, snake charmers and all that kind of yeah. crazy yeah. stuff, you know. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like it a bit, walking on the hot coals and all this kind of stuff, yeah. strange notions. Yeah, and so uh, and the Beatles went to Rishikesh, the foothills of the Himalayas, and they spent some time with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. So it struck my interest uh, and a whole generation. And when you see the lyrics of the Beatles, especially along the lines of George Harrison's material. Uh, you're left to wonder, well, there's something there about the East that maybe we should explore a little bit. And so my personal journey or exploration led to a meeting with some of the monks on, on the street in Toronto, Vancouver, and other places. And when they came to my college where I was taking in a fine arts course, mm -hmm. um, and there were some monks there, and they just kind of helped themselves to the lounges, just starting, started talking to people. And I was one of them and I was a recipient. So I invited them to my apartment and that's where I got a real good dose. One of those people was uh, B.B. Govinda Swami. Oh, no kidding. And, okay. Amazing. Yeah, and he was telling us what well, these guys were so intriguing because uh, he was telling me that his uncle was uh, the manager, business manager for Elvis Presley and that Elvis used to go to their home and have meals there and all. I said, wow, what fascinating people they are here. You know, these uh, <laughs> These aren't ordinary monks. folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's an interesting background. So that's how I got interested. The philosophy was intriguing. And, and then I visited the Temple in Toronto, Montreal, and, uh, you know, I had the flatbread, which was a new experience, chapatis or rotis. And now it's like regular fare, but... You know, we grew up on Wonder Bread, you know, that funny white stuff that's just made mainly foam. And you wonder where the bread is. That's why it's called Wonder Bread, I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, one thing led to another. And I decided that this is the right fit for me. Uh, and um, I would just try visiting an ashram. And that was in Toronto. Let me see what it's all about. And I went through their morning program. And so I um, read a little bit, made friends, connected, bonded. And uh, I, it took me a few months to really make that decision. I'm going to be one of them. This is for me. I've been 20 years. I've been trying to find myself in the world. And I thought it was just a good fit, not for everybody, but it was just the thing for me. 
I felt like, I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie, The Misfits. It's with Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe and Cliff uh, uh, Montgomery, Montgomery Cliff. Cliff. Yeah, and, uh, and it, was, um, it was a very dark film. It's because it left you feeling like, I don't belong anywhere. I'm not accepted anywhere. Okay. So uh, I, I, I felt like that was one of these films that uh, yeah, it just left you kind of empty. And uh, I felt like that a little bit in life and I really want to find myself. So I found here are the people, the ones, the people that sing and they dance and they talk philosophy and they have the most fantastic food. And it's all about service, you know, service to humankind and uh, the sharing of the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that was so intriguing to me. I thought, yes, yes, this is it, <laughs> this is it for me, you know. And once I, uh, I stepped into the ashram, made that decision against many odds, I, I never left. I mm. just, that's it. And that, now we're talking about like a, almost a half a century later. I'm still yeah. hanging in there. <laughs> it's wonderful and, and um, thriving. And, and um, you know, of course, to become a, to be part of that culture and to, um, be part, take up that practice one doesn't necessarily have to become a monk what to speak of a, a lifelong monk um but you um took those vows at a certain point i'm not i'm not sure when that was but took i'm just know, having a little, just having a little trouble hearing you oh there. yeah okay i'm sorry Marge. i was saying that um that uh of course one doesn't need to become a, a monk or what to speak of a lifelong monk to to practice bhakti or become part of that culture that you're attracted to but uh when was it that you took your vows of of sannyas to become a life well uh, so i joined in 73 in the spring and by the you know fall i took my diksha initiation that's when i made my vows and i was totally comfortable with it you know i mean I, again i was raised on the farm and we would, uh, you know, see animals being born, like, uh, and then we'd give them names. They were like pets to us. Mm -hmm. And then you see them on the dinner table later on. And it was just very uh, gruesome. And when I heard that uh, monks, they were saying that, listen, you don't, you can just be vegetarian. It's an old tradition with roots from India and people have been vegetarian there forever. So uh, I thought, yeah, that, that seems to ring true. And uh, that was kind of like what sold me. So 73 in the fall, that's when I made my vows. And we've been at it. And then in 84, I took formal vows as a, as a Swami. In 1984. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, I think that um, being a, that those vows of renunciation, uh, that, you know, you would be a, a celibate monk for the rest of your life and dedicating your body, mind, and words to the service of God. Um that's uh it's a it's a rare thing that people do um you, for sure you <laughs> <betcha>. <laughs> and uh but 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 not only that in in the western world when people do it commonly um even within the Hare krishna movement uh, a, a sannyasi will have managerial responsibility perhaps or will live a life where the body mind and words are fully devoted but maybe not in such a traditional way where like the 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 tradition we think of the sannyasi is like a wanderer, someone that just like wanders from home and passes. We're kind of like a hermit staying in a small you yeah. know, hole in the ground or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So, so exactly. you have had those kind of responsibilities, managerial yeah. and kind of pastoral kind of role. Yeah, exactly. Like kind of like what clergy does, you yeah. know, and like today we're having a big wedding in the community and I sign the papers, you know, okay. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, Definitely, I've been involved in managerial uh, areas and uh, a variety. I, I find myself in the kitchen cooking because I love it. I know Mara, I, I, I understand you're, you love to be there. And it's such a big part of our, our culture, you know, to come up with fine food. Yeah. So I thought the whole gamut, you know, the yeah. whole thing is what, what I've gone through. But this walking is kind of unique. And of course, I've got an artistic outlet, I, you know. Uh, written a lot of dramas and engaged a lot of young folks in yeah. dramas with a you know, sort of moral message. And uh, so I've, uh, it's colorful, it's rich, mm -hmm. my life. I have no regrets. No question. And, 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 but so I was wondering this call to walk from one end of Canada to the other end, 
was that was there something in that like uh, something within you saying i want to taste that more traditional sannyasi life where you're just alone and wandering was it was that part of the yeah part? yeah exactly there was a gnawingness in within me and saying get out there and uh, so in 95 a lot of people around the world were preparing for the centenary of our guru Srila Prabhupada he was yeah. he would be 100 years old so let's celebrate you know and uh, so I thought let me do something a little unique let me go across the country and get out there and meet people I I don't know what, what I don't know what people have been up to you know I mean I joined I missed the whole disco era and people <laughs> say you didn't miss anything and I I didn't know what Michael Jackson's moonwalk was about all those things you know so I thought let me get out there and just connect you you've know? Been, okay, you felt that you've been living a bit of a cloistered life and you wanted to also meet yeah. people. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. It's not like I'm totally blocked out, but, you know, life can be extremely busy. You're serving a community, you're involved in Sunday school, all those kind of things with kids and whatnot, kitchen duties, and some travels occasionally to India and so on like that. So here was something different. And I must tell you something more intimately. Yeah. There was a little bit of gossip going on. And I thought, I've got to get away from people uh, dynamics and let me just <laughs> okay. go on the road, you know? So that's the best and, thing and, to walk away from it all. Oh, uh, just, yes, yes. It was like, a, and it's a meditative walk. It's a, uh, it became an introspective walk. So it's not just walking. As I was saying earlier to you on, I was saying that uh, it's not just a workout <clears throat> because, you know, uh, I like to take care of my health, but it's also a work in. It's a, like an internal development that you go through mm. when you're doing this thing. And I got inspired by the likes of Chaitanya. And of course, it was Gandhi. And there was, you know, Shankaracharya. A lot of teachers in the past who have actually done long walks before there were highways and before there were automobiles and so sure. on like that. I, they had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but But here we have choices. And I thought, let me not go into a jet. Let me not go into an automobile. And I, I don't care for automobiles. Never have. And there's I noticed that you, you titled you entitled <laughs> an entire chapter of your book. Um, I don't like. Is it? I don't like cars. Yeah, I don't like. Cars. That's right. Right. I know that's kind of, let's say, uh, let's say, controversial to say that, but somebody has to say it. <laughs> yeah, because <I'm, I'm> <laughs> like they kill one point two five million people every year in accidents, and and many more millions. Uh, are injured by them so let's call them necessary so evils yeah. yeah so many things so for that reason also uh, you know getting in touch with the elements being with the sun the moon and uh, you know just having gravel or dirt or, or sand under your feet as your floor and the trees as your walls and then maybe the stars in the sky as your ceiling I want to have that kind of experience which is a very traditional yeah, and, sure. and I we, just have a chance to meet people, you know. Yeah, connect. sure. I, mm -hmm. I I imagine it must be quite a um, surprise for someone out in the middle of Alberta or something like that, you know, in some lonely yeah. place, and then suddenly a, a saffron-clad Swami walks out of nowhere, and they're, they're curious. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it kind of works like this, Kostova. It's like someone will see you way in the distance. And I've had people call me, oh, you, you look like a, a traffic cone. <laughs> and I was suddenly <laughs> moving, you know, person. and they get closer and closer. Wait, a monk, a monk in, <laughs> in the middle of Saskatchewan, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would imagine. And, uh, they get excited. Well, I'd imagine it's, it, it is exciting and very curious to people. And I'd imagine um, it's very, it's a novelty. But yeah, I'm sure, sure that there must be people that also must turn to you and, and inquire with, with a great sincerity as well. Yeah, well, just to give you an idea, uh, on the first walk I did in 96, uh, a fellow pulls over, he's a Filipino, you know, Canadian, and a red sports car, and he pulls out over and he says, you know, I'm from Winnipeg, and uh, I read in, about your, what you're doing in the paper. Okay. And uh, I was just wondering if I could talk to you because uh, I was going steady with a girl for five years and uh, she just ran away with my, my best friend. So can we talk? You know? 
<laughs> and he so went I searching jumped for in. you. He went searching on the highway for you. Is that? Well, he just had chanced upon me. It okay. just like what wow, they call amazing. the Transcan of the highway. It's so along this road. It's really in sort of the old, most ancient rock kind of country lakes, trees, uh, rocks, and that's all you see, you know? And yeah. so I really stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he just thought, hey, let me take advantage of this opportunity to talk to a monk and maybe he can, you know, can bring us some peace of mind. And so that's part of the job, you know, you, gotta, you sure. become a psychiatrist, you become this and that Counselor. along the road. And yeah. Sharing, yeah. sharing what you've uh, gained in your own spiritual that's right. And you definitely you share some wisdom and help people to understand, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not this physical body, I'm a spirit and some of the foundational ideas. And then you share the mantra with them, the Krishna mantra, and uh, they really appreciate it, you know, so it's, uh, you're out there to do a service, you know, I've had all kinds of people pull over for different things. Like, first of all, the most common question, would you like a ride? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not taking any rides <laughs> walking across the country. Oh, really? Are, no way. I don't believe this. He says, well, yeah, the, I'm a monk, and that's the kind of thing monks do. And I'm walking for the spiritual healing of the nation. You know? And so, okay, great. And then you just make friends with them and bond. And then, then the, the table may turn, and you ask, well, what's happening with you in your life? How's your relationships? And then, oh, then you really get into something interesting, you know, because mm. the most important thing in people's lives is relationships. And uh, a lot of people are, it's not going that good, you know? And then they open up their heart and get everything off their chest. And then some or other, uh, you know, you can perhaps bring them around to a point of, well, why don't you just kick more, get more connected to the universe, to the divine, to in our case, Krishna. And, uh, you know, they really appreciate it. You know, those wonderful things that happen along the road. You know, can I um, share another little story? Please. This yes. was in California. And there's a couple they pulled over as, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm walking across the states from Boston to San Francisco, no problem. And I said, well, you know, uh, and the fellow who was in the, in the passenger seat, he was saying, well, you know, I'm just, I just want to be honest with you. I'm just trying to keep myself out of jail. Because, okay, great. And then another request was, well, you know, we're trying to have a baby, but we can't seem to have a baby together, so even though we tried. I said, well, maybe what I could do, I can chant some mantras for you because I just did a dog blessing the day before Carson <laughs> City. Yeah, people brought their dogs, their rescue dogs, and we had a dog blessing for them. We did what was called, did a, like an RT ceremony. I spoke a little bit from the Gita, Vidya, Vinaya Sampani, Brahmani, Gavahaschini, Shunicha, which is a verse about, you know, equality, seeing everyone to be equal mm -hmm. uh, on the spiritual plane, although physically we're different or we complement each other. So they like that. And, and uh, so I offered, well, maybe I can do a fertility uh, blessing for you too. <laughs> so I did. And I said, just get back to me and let me know if anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, they never did. Okay. And um, are you still there with me? Yes, I hear you, Marsh. Yeah. I was wondering, um, you can hear me? Yeah, so th those are the kind of experiences we have. Yeah, uh, yeah I can I can hear you faint, faintly. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. I was I was uh I was thinking that, you know, this was the tradition in India that there were, you know, when 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 people got oh did we lose Maharaj? Yeah, Maharaj, like are you still here? Him. Oh uh, he's uh wait, he's just muted. I'm sorry? I think he's still here. Okay. Asking him to unmute. Marj, let me know if you can hear me. I see you there. Okay, we need to unmute. There we oh. I think he got remuted. Please unmute yourself, Maharaj. Or Gabriel, if you can help him. Yep. Okay, there we go. You're We're back. back on track. Sorry about that. I hope no that problem. doesn't happen too well from first. Okay. So, um, Maharaj, what I was uh, thinking was that it was a tradition, um, a, a tradition in India that there were, you can't hear me? Can yeah, you hear I can me? hear you now. 
Okay. Yeah. I'd say it was a tradition in India that there'd be many wandering monks uh, and That's that right. they would pass through your village and um, people would see that color, that saffron color and know, oh, this is a person who's, who's dedicated their body, their mind, their words to connecting, reconnecting with God and they're passing through a village. We should... Uh, give them a you know a space to sleep and and give them a meal and, and inquire from them you know uh, tell us the stories from the Ramayana or tell us the stories from Mahabharata to help us understand how we can make our own lives more uh, uh, spiritual and, and more meaningful uh, so it's an incredible thing to kind of live that tradition in the modern context which really isn't designed for it or where people don't necessarily know. To relate with you that way but i'd imagine many people maybe um through intuition kind of greeted you with that kind of uh yeah kostaba i understand what you're saying uh yeah there is a reverence that people have in general and i've heard people say and I, uh we heard you were coming amongst coming into town so with they think something very special is going to happen yeah. and um you know, in terms of inquiring about the absolute, that does happen from time to time. But what's really, it's novel, as you said earlier on. Mm -hmm. And people just think it's amazing that we got a monk coming into town. And, and my support person who looks a little bit like a, uh, like a pirate, he, uh, he, we carry, he carried on his shoulder a blue front Amazon parrot, which talked. So okay. the three of us were a sensation in these really conservative neighborhoods and countries. So, you know, it was, uh, it was just that. It was just a great experience and to connect with people uh, for whatever reason, whether it was sure. the bird or me. And we got into a lot of schools to explain people what we're up to. And um, it was just uh, the, the connecting with people in areas where I never dreamed we'd go into, you know, yeah. including uh, bars and things like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, you know, um, I was thinking that beyond like the external part of it, in other words, meeting people, um, helping people and serving them in any way that you can, there's also a very important internal thing that must be going on. And I wanted to read a couple quotes. Now, these are from Srila Prabhupada's commentaries, and they have to do with the sannyasi wandering alone, wandering fearlessly alone. And, and so this first one is from the, the purport to the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter six, text number 13. And Srila Prabhupada writes this. He says, it is the duty of the mendicant to experience all varieties of God's creation by traveling alone, through all forests, hills, towns, villages, etc., to gain faith in God and strength of mind, as well as to enlighten the inhabitants with the message of God. A sannyasi is duty bound to take all these risks without fear. And then in a similar statement, this is to uh, a commentary to Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter 16, texts one through three. Uh, he writes, that those it's a description of those who are endowed with the divine nature there's a list of qualities and the first one uh, is fearlessness and Prabhupada writes one must be fully convinced that krishna the supreme personality of godhead in his localized aspect as the paramatma is always within that he is seeing everything that he always knows what one intends to do one must thus one must thus have firm conviction that Krishna's Paramatma will take care of his soul, surrender to him. I shall never be alone, one should think. Even if I live in the darkest regions of the forest, I shall be accompanied by Krishna, and he will give me all protection. That conviction is called abhayam, fearlessness. This state of mind is necessary for a person in the renounced order of life. And so I was curious to question you really on, on this level, this internal level. If there's anything you can share with us about lonely times on the road where you felt a deeper connection with God or you, you know, how, how did that, how did that wandering and, and that being alone out there, did, how did that play out on your own internal level? Yeah. Well, you know, I, when I was walking through Nevada, I walked on the loneliest highway in America <laughs> Okay. and that's how it's dubbed. And that's, it attracts tourists, no doubt. 
Is that Route <laughs> it's very like desert there. Well, no, not it's not okay. Route sixty six. It's Highway fifty okay. five zero. And um, yeah, you have moments where you feel you're kind of by yourself, and then, but although there's always company in the form of you know mosquitoes or black flies or horse flies, always wilderness around and you know so you do have moments when you're kind of alone and uh, that's why I have a habit to while walking I'll do my chanting on my beads and uh, that keeps me somewhat connected so you may be alone but you're never really alone there's always the witness in the heart that's there with you and uh, despite what kind of uh, you know, challenges you may be going through. Because some days you get a lot of attention. People pull over and say, would you like a ride? Would you like a ride? Say, I hear what you're doing. I think it's great. Can I give you a hug? Blah, blah, blah. And then some days there's hours where you just, uh, no one stops. It's just traffic going by, you know. And because uh, I tend to go by along the highways where I'll meet people. And um, so you have to contend with that. And uh there's strength that comes from, you know, this uh, kind of um, introspection, walking while meditating deeply as possible. Uh, what's, you know, that you have the sun beating down on you. It could be heavy rainstorm and a snow, snowstorms and things like that as well. So it's a humbling experience. And uh, it uh, humility is like the foundation for success in life, you know, mm. as opposed to the opposite being extremely proud or egotistical like that. So that's what walking does, you know, especially if you're doing like 25, you know, miles a day or what we say up in Canada, you know, 40, 40 kilometers a day. Personally, I like the kilometers better because it sounds bigger, more significant number. <laughs> but, you know, so anyways, it's, it is. Uh, time to reflect and to uh, try understand your place in the world. I'm just a little spark of life. Mm. And that's where I belong. And I have to just kind of plug into the universe. I'm a little screw in this cosmos. And I have to simply stay screwed in. And then I'm doing my job. Then I'll feel whole. I'll feel complete. I feel like I've contributed something like that. It's amazing. You know, I just um, I mentioned this on our show recently, but just uh, just over a week ago, I was in Italy and I got an invitation to visit this mountain called uh, Laverna, um, which is a, a mountain where St. Francis used to go and he had his deep meditations there. And there's um, this kind of very intense crevice. It's like these steep rock walls mm -hmm. that go up, I don't know, 150 feet or something like that. It's really deep. Sounds go great. In there. And, and, um, and it said that St. Francis would meditate there on his own smallness. Um, but it sounds like you also, on a, in a parallel way, were uh, feeling that way on that long highway, I guess. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, these are like reflections from great uh, uh, monks of the past, like Chaitanya, who helps us to understand that, you know, to maintain this humility, think of yourself to be to be small, significant, mind you, but yeah. um, small and to be tolerant like a tree and you know, to be ready to offer respects to all others. And, you know, so that now we're living the things that I was reading from whether it's the Gita or texts like Chaitanya Charita read about Chaitanya. And uh, now I'm doing it, I'm actually enacting it. I'm, I'm mm. uh, it's rolling out into reality. And uh, at the same time, I'm not, blocking myself out from the world i'm definitely very visible and now i'm out for the people but uh, definitely there's a strong connect with uh, with the environment around me and it's just absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. and like krishna states in the gita i am adventure so now i'm experiencing adventure like hardly anybody else does yeah. yeah well th you know that's a good point it's hardly i don't know if everyone that's hearing this i don't know if one of us will do what you've done <laughs> okay um, well, you know personally you know i just like to you know offer a little advice if you had need to go to the convenience store just walk it and it's just three blocks away th well that's where i was gonna go yeah give the car a break <laughs> <laughs> give the car a break but i was i was gonna ask um beyond just like the physical effort of walking where we might not normally walk uh but you know to go to look within is something that our lifestyles are work against 
uh, mm -hmm. they, they call us to constantly keep the mind turned outward, to not mm -hmm. go internally, to not meditate on, on myself as the observer within the body, to not meditate on God within my own heart. Generally, our consciousness is focused outward. And this kind of walking alone, you know, it's such an for extended period of time. Even if your mind doesn't go there right away, it seems like eventually it's going to take your mind within. But for those of us who aren't going to do that, are, is, is there anything that you can share with us that we might be able to work? Well, you know, like there? everyone tries to factor in in their planning of the year, we're going to go on vacation. So a different kind of vacation, instead, huh. of, instead of going to Vegas or Disney World or whatever, why not consider going on a vision quest? Why not go walk down the trail, uh, go by some like pitch your tent and do it alone or with a few other people and, you know, let the let the calves on your legs hurt a little bit. You know, just go for that experience, what we call tapasya, austerity. Yeah. And it will bring about a, a, a richness in your life that, you know, you could not have imagined before. And it's it's cheap too. <laughs> <laughs> Same point. It's not very expensive, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I, I would just say, it, maybe you don't have to power walking to the level that what I was doing, but I would say, take that break. Take that break that you deserve. Mm. Uh, where you can go for inner development and where our, our journeys are all leading to death ultimately and then uh, rebirth so why not prepare for death and the best way to do it is to uh to put some life into yourself you know and mm. uh, that comes about by doing things that are very energy filled um by being out there in the elements and getting closer to god yeah. yeah so that that would be my advice and um it's great advice yeah we, we often talk on the show that you know like we get these vacations and then we spend a lot of money and we go out to beach but there's all kinds of it's not quite the way it looks in the brochure and you get caught yeah. up and you know you get ripped off here and there and this happens yeah. and that happens and, and you finally get to your place and you think it's going to be happiness will be there and it's not always happiness that you find there uh better to better to focus on what can I learn? What can I experience uh, on a vacation? than like, what can I enjoy? Right. And uh, I like your direction with that. The real enjoyment is uh, being connected to the elements. You make friends with them. They're your amigos. Mm -hmm. Just like say, for instance, you know, some of the best walks I've had is along the uh like the saint lawrence river you know just walk along with it there's an oxidation going on it's there's a flow and i remember also crossing when i did the states going over the uh, hudson river and then the what's next mississippi and missouri the three main big rivers that go north south and says so these are like living organisms and you just feel a stronger connection with uh with the environment and you know I, I would and, and there's all kinds of hints to you know nature itself and now when you actually walk through it you see I'm walking like I'm I'm touching the Gita now really maybe for the first time I understand what it means the taste mm -hmm. of water if it's coming from a glacial fed mountain or uh, you know whatever whatever the case may be the heat the wind uh, the wind is the purifier and uh, and so on like that making connections uh, like that any references to uh, to the material nature now comes alive you know because you're out there you're right. out there and you know I want to say that while it's great to be out in the countryside and in, in the wilderness through you know forests and so on like that. It's also great to be in a city just for a change. But my experience is, you know, after you go through one city, like say Montreal, you can clear it in a day, you know, like 40 kilometers across. It's nothing. And, you know, when you're halfway through, oh, well, just let me get out of here. Let me get it. Let me get past the country. Okay. Now, Maharaj, um, can you hear me right now? I'm just you chop, a little choppy for us. Are you there? Yep. Okay. I can I, hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to ask um, a couple titles or chapters yep. that intrigued me from your book, uh, The mm -hmm. Saffron Path. Um, our chapter 19 is called The Times I've Laughed on the Road. Yes. And chapter 30 is called The Times I've Cried on the Road. 
Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you might share a little bit of something from those chapters with us. Well, you know, when you're walking, doing this long power walking, you step into the three phases of time, past, present, future, you know? So a lot of, uh, you know, what was in the past, like, I'd be honest with you, I was uh, thinking about my mother once and I just bawled my eyes out, you know, and I didn't care what the motorist thought. I was just, uh, if anybody has any concern, they'll just, hey, I was just thinking about my mom. So mm -hmm. that's all it is. Nothing more than that, okay. you know. And, uh, you know, there are things that would cause a lot of pain, of course, you know, if you're really pushing it, like my biggest day was 99 kilometers, uh, which is 64 miles, you know, and uh, no reason so much to cry on that day. <laughs> but I did get a little tired. And when it comes to laughter, well, you know, laughter is like an incredible healer for anybody. If you're feeling a little depressed, then you've got to just crack a few jokes, pull out some, and that's what it is. So just like I was walking through the Rockies in Canada and uh, someone took a paint can and instead of or says, do not pass, you know, for motors because it gets treacherous. They blocked out some letters and it just, it just was finished with no ass instead of do not pass. And I just had a good laugh and my laughter was just uh, echoing in the mountains. It was just great. <laughs> it was a, just a great moment. You're by yourself and then suddenly this little quirky thing comes up. I suppose when we're not watching Can sitcoms you hear me okay? and movies and this and that, even like a little bit of humor goes a long way when you're out there on the road. Well, it's really important. And that's why, you know, it's good to have a comrade. It's good to have like a support guy uh, who'll be there for you. So you can, you can share uh, some of those light moments that you've gone through. Yeah. I was, I was interested in that support. Uh, how, how logistically exactly, how does it work for you? Like your, your meals and where you Well, stay? We'd, we'd oftentimes camp. What happened when I was in Canada, we do a lot of camping. When I was in the States, uh, we were very lucky because we stayed in Patel motels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That is motels that were, you know, let's say run operated by people of the Gujarati community who understand this culture. You're like, sure. a Swami's coming, Swamiji coming, we'll give you a room and we'll cook for you, Swamiji. Of course. So, so that's so nice. So uh, other than that, uh, when it does come to camping, uh, we'll be in a tent. I'll zip the thing open in the morning and... Uh, and go for my shower and then my support guy will bring me to the spot from where i left off the day before and then he'll go back and just see that the tent gets dry once the dew gets dried off by the sun and then a few hours later he'll come and check on me to see if i'm still alive okay <laughs> and then go set up camp for the next night that's right yeah and he'd be very busy uh uh, it's dealing with the media, letting people know around, uh, arranging places for us to stay, arranging for the food. He'd oftentimes do some of the cooking and because we're on that sort of plant-based diet, right? Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, he'd be busy and that would be our format. Uh, he'd arrange programs, speaking engagements for us. So th that, that would be the way it would uh, operate. So he always had some person there for you. And, you know, we sometimes get lost. Even if you have cell phones, when I first started, we didn't have cell phones. You had to do everything instinctively. And we get lost for hours sometimes. Where is he? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying, uh, one of my guys just quit on me and he just drove back to the nearest city like an hour and a half away and says, I can't find him. I don't know where he is. I'm going crazy. So <laughs> then a second person had come out and looked for me and the in the, in the you know in the rocky and fine because kind of when you're a monk you kind of stick out <laughs> right right uh, uh Marge, before, even before we end we have a few minutes left um i was wondering this walking is a big part of of your life and uh and obviously you've written a book on it. another another big part of your life is theater right. um, <laughs> as you, you as a performer as a writer and a director um you you develop um bhakti related theater and i was wondering if you could speak a bit about that the importance of theater in the bhakti tradition and what is what's it about theater that uh draws you into it 
Well, yes, Kostova, I've had the pleasure to, you know, I always had an artistic side to me. I'm not one of those super quiet, shy hermits. Okay. You know, I've got it, you know, I've got something exploding in me that has to, you know, just get out there, you know. So uh, I started to develop like community theater. It's not necessarily professional. It's uh, but we try to bring in uh, talent uh, from within our community. And so I've had the good fortune to go to different places in the world, like South Africa, South America, and of course, the US, Canada, Europe, and India, and uh, just assemble troops, get people together. Uh, hey, let's, we've been reading about these particular pastimes of saints and sages and their interaction with the kings and the monarchs and, you know, the, the you know, demons and the, the asuras and the, and the uh, devatas or the demigods, stories like that. Is that we got to put this from the, take it from the page and put it onto the stage. Mm. You know? And so that's one of the things that I've been doing that kind of keeps me percolated on a spiritual level. And uh, it's uh, the rewards are, uh, let's say, uh, without limit. Uh, the people that I meet later on who I engage in drums say, you really helped me in your spiritual life you helped me over my self-consciousness you know because we were on the stage and we were together and we were uh we were just having such a good time and we got some discipline all those kind of things so uh that that's one of the things that i've been doing and uh i won't stop i'll keep at it until the day i die walking is something i might have to stop at I'm frankly, okay <laughs> So I kind of you know, did over done my walking, my cartilage just wore down, you know. But uh, as far as I, possible, I just love to put out, you know, dramas and live. And we, during COVID, to put out two films. One is called The Embassy, which recently got an award. And it's a conversation be between Krishna and Duryodhana. The actors did a phenomenal job, sort of in a modern setting. And uh, another one, uh, Rolling the Dice. <laughs> Um, it's uh, with a story from the Mahabharata. Yeah, so it uh, keeps me excited. And you know, when you actually read these stories and you put them out on the stage, you won't forget them. Mm -hmm. The details are very uh, compelling. And, uh, they, yeah, they, they, they stay with you uh, pretty much forever. And uh, I just get a lot of satisfaction. It's just great when people applause and uh, everyone just has uh, so much appreciation for for these uh, this particular service that I offer. Yeah, well, I know as like a audience member in certain dramas that I've attended, um, even one man dramas, uh, I've felt profoundly like in other words, I've seen one man dramas where someone plays the role of a particular great teacher or a figure from history in bhakti and uh, feeling such a profound experience of like that person is came from the past and has come to our present and is like manifesting for us uh and, and feeling that you know uh feeling that person work the way into my mind and heart uh in, in a really uh a unique way um but also i'd imagine from the point of view of let's say an actor Right. that uh, it must draw one's mind into meditating on that person's mood and that person's uh, knowledge and that person's presence in a way that's, uh, it must become a very deep meditation. Right. It's a great therapy. And what I want to say on this matter is that it's a little bit like when your soul jumps out of your body and you enter in someone else's body and you become that person. You, roll, you walk around inside another yeah. human being or character and, and, and you have to understand another person's view on life, another angle. And also in that way, it's therapeutic because we tend to get so much you know, like in, into a bubble, into our own self. It's really important to understand there's a lot of people around you and they have a lot of different feelings. It's not just about you. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that way, I find it's really uh, gratifying and yeah, it is a very, let's say, healing kind of a process. And as much as it's entertaining. Nope. As much as it is entertaining, it is. 
hopefully we'll get Marish back. But we're just about out of time, so uh, I just want to thank Bhakti Margaswamy so much for joining us today. Hopefully uh, we haven't lost him. And you want to uh, mention his book and his website again? Yeah, let's. Yeah, why don't you do that, Mary? Um, the website is thewalkingmonk.net, and his book is called The Saffron Path: Trekking the Globe with the Walking Monk. It's available okay. on Amazon. There's Mara. She's back. Okay. Thank you so much, Mara, for spending this time with Thank us. You. I really appreciate Sorry it. Sorry about coming in and going out. I know there's some technical problems here. No problem. And now uh, people can see some of uh, the videos of some of those dramas on your website, I believe, right? On thewalkingmonk.net. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to uh, uh, view some of those things. I, I've had people say, you know, my kids watch it all the time. They learn so much. And uh, yeah, that's there for them. Okay, and uh, I also wanted to add that I'm one of the founding fathers of the uh, Mantra Retreat. It's a men's retreat and it's being held the first week, second okay. weekend of September in New Vrindavan uh, to okay. go over men's issues because we have Vaishnavi retreats. So I thought for the guys, we should have something as well. <laughs> Sometimes the guys got to get together. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Marsh.